Welcome to the Godfather. We join in with the Godfather himself on his daughter's wedding day. Now it is important to know the family members, so we we'll start off with the family members on the board. First off, we got Donatello Cortisol, the Godfather, played by Al Pacino. He's the big cheese in charge of this family mafia, which I think is the most powerful mafia in the tri-state area. He got all these political connections and shit in his pocket. I believe there's five families, and this is the most powerful. Mm, it sounds about right. Moving on to the children of Mr. Cornetto, Tom Riddle, his adopted son, played by Al Pacino, who is his family consultant, consigliere. Translate that however you will. He cannot be the next Don because he's not actually blood family, so this is kind of the next best thing. And the Don is basically the head of shit. So if you look at your penis uh, and its tip, that's the Don. Hence why they call it the Don, because the rest of it is just a G. True story. Next son is Pasta Alfredo, played by Al Pacino. He's a bitch, and I wasn't really paying enough attention to know that much about him, but I'm pretty sure he is fucking useless. Michelangelo, played by Al Pacino. He's a war hero and really wants to stay out of the family business, because he doesn't really like it that much. Sonny, or Santino, played by, you guessed it, Al Pacino. Listen, I know he's in this movie, I just don't know who he plays. I'm bound to get it right at some point. He's the eldest, I think, which I guess makes him the next Don. He's also a bit hot-headed and impulsive. Then there's a sister. Uh, uh, Francine. She's unimportant. Don't worry about her. All you need to know about her is that she exists and that she's played by Al Capucci. I could have just googled it, but I didn't. So here we are. Francine is getting married and Don Cornetto is having meetings with people in his office, meeting with this one dude that he know a long time but still barely knows, who's asking him for a favor which he kinda doesn't like because he doesn't know him and he's like not his friend. She's like, oh, you come on my daughter's wedding and blah blah blah. You know that scene. Mike is eating bitch lasagna with his girl called Potassium. Some guy says, Gabagoo, Sonny shoes away the FBI. Don attends more meetings. They resurrect Prince Philip to sing some Italian shit. Johnny Cash comes over and Don's like, yeah, he loves him, right? Because he's his godfather and he threatened to blow some people's brains out if they didn't let him go from a contract or some shit and make him famous or some shit like that, right? And Tom's like, like, you know he only comes here when he wants something. It's no coincidence he came on Francine's wedding day because it is Sicilian tradition that no Sicilian can refuse a request on his daughter's wedding day, which is why he's having so many meetings today for favors. Do Sicilian fathers also set up their daughter's wedding in really hard to reach places so no one can get to them or do they lock themselves up for the most of the day so no one can ask them for fucking murder as a favor because they're too pussy to call it how insane this tradition is? What retard Sicilian thought this was a good idea? Anyway, Johnny sings to some bitches while Mike tells Kay that his dad's a mafia boss but he is nothing like him. He's a completely different man. Then Johnny goes over to the Don and whines to him about this part in this movie that is really perfect for him and will make him an even bigger star than he already is but the only problem is he can't get it because the director refuses to give it to him and he's like I don't know what to do what to do what's the matter with you don't be a little bitch and go deal with your problems now go enjoy the wedding while I go deal with your problems the daughter gets married and the Don sends uh, Tom over to Hollywood to go make the director an offer he cannot refuse Tom gets there and meets Waltz the director and Waltz denies his request to give Johnny the part he's like fuck you Stramboli I'm actually half German oh I'm sorry fuck you Nazi but then he invites Tom over to his home shows him his massive fucking palace and his pride and joy a $600,000 horse in 1940s and 50s mommy that's big dough you know what I'm saying then at dinner he basically tells him the same thing to fuck off that he is never gonna give Johnny the part because basically he stuck his dick in one of his investments okay he invested a lot of money in this bitch and he's gonna make a big star and Johnny fucked her probably and got her pregnant or she left ah fucking point is she's not around anymore and he invested a lot in her and he's mad at Johnny so he's not gonna give him the part and he says that he isn't afraid of any of their scare tactics so Tom flies back to New York and next day the dude wakes up with his horse's head in his bed he probably beat himself I'm just saying because when your body feels wetness warm wetness when you're asleep it remembers that peeing is a thing and it lets the floodgates open apparently i know why i mentioned that moving on needless to say johnny gets the point bellissimo next order of business is some dude called sorozo who wants to start a cocaine business and he is backed by another family i don't know what backed means in the scenario but it probably means protected by anyway he is backed by another mafia family called the itty bitty titty committee also known as the tatalias and he wants the political protection that the cornetto family has in exchange for a cut of the profits now tom and sonny think there's good money in hardcore drugs and if they don't get into it now it'll hurt him down the line but although he deals in everything fucked under the sun from uh, gambling to pimping, Don thinks drugs are a bad idea and he draws a line at that. What a gentleman he is. So they go to this meeting that Solozo called to relate to him this information that they don't want to take part in his new business venture. The Don ain't retarded though and he knows that Solozo might be a sneaky bricky bitch so he sends this fat dude Luca over undercover to the Tatiana family who are protecting Solozo to find out more. But Lardas doesn't get far because as soon as he steps through the door to the Tatalia family, they stab him in the hand and choke him to death. After that, the Don's bodyguard calls in sick that day so he goes home with Pasta Alfredo but before they do that he wants to buy some fruit and when he does that he spots two people running at him with guns so he tries to run back to his car but he doesn't make it in time and gets shot five times in his back and Fredo is too dim-witted clumsy and slow to do anything and while his dad bleeds out in the middle of the street he's like ah bah, bah. yeah that'll help fucking stronzo how about you fucking do something like call an ambulance or run after the people also what dipshit mob boss doesn't have a gun on him Donatello Cornelius whatever Mike is walking hey I'm walking yeah sorry he was walking around with Kay talking with Kay like babe would you still love me if I was a worm hell nah how the fuck am I supposed to stick my dick in a worm guess he could wrap it around his dick like a cursed cock ring they find out in the newspapers that his dad 
bag got popped. So he crosses the street to make a phone call in the phone booth. Where's the newsstand guy yelling at him for stealing two newspapers and throwing them in the street? This is not realistic. This is New York. Where's the yelling? Where's the hustle? Where's the random homeless man charging his phone from the only outlet outside the Empire State Building while eating a pizza? Doesn't matter. While that was happening, Solozo got his hands on Tom and told him what he did to his dad, the Don, and told him to go calm Sunny down before he does anything rash and causes a war between the five families in New York because they support the Tatalias and it'll be a big thing and so on. And when they let him go to get back to his family and tell him this message, they find out that the Don survived the five shots to the back. Tom gets to Sunny and they find out that Luca is sleeping with the fishes. Everyone is guarding the house and the hospital that Don's in. And next day, his men take out the traitor bodyguard that called in sick that they tell in his killing. Hey, pull up. What do I gotta take a leak? Why the hell would you stand in front of the firing line while pissing? Even if you're standing off by an angle so you don't get shot, it's still a, kind of a bad idea, isn't it? Anyway, Mike goes to see his woman who sprung an I love you on him at the worst possible time. He doesn't say it back. He goes to see his dad in the hospital, which is eerily quiet and suspiciously empty, almost like someone cleared it out for an ass ass nation on the dawn. Thankfully, it hasn't happened yet though. A nurse walks in and tells him that the cops made everyone clear out 10 minutes ago. So he calls up his brother to get more men over there, while he and a blissfully unaware nurse move his dad into another room. Then some dude comes up and it's not an assassin, but Enzo, not Ferrari, Enzo the baker, one of the people that asked for a favor at the beginning of the movie from Don and Mike tells him that there's danger and that he should leave but the guy wants to stay and help so he's like okay if you want to help meet me downstairs in one minute and he stands outside the hospital with him and they both pretend like they have guns which is enough to scare away the real assassins who roll up just seconds later then roll away because they're there pretending to have guns and right after the cops arrive like I thought I cleared out you guinea pigs how much is that stramboli fuck paying you to set up my father arrest him he didn't do anything and he's a war hero I said arrest him I am the captain don't talk back to me I have a fragile ego and small penis wow TMI cap TMI shut up you're not my wife you can't tell me one over share then Tom arrives with some guys like, these are private detectives legally allowed to carry guns, other big law words, stuff, stuff, stuff. Now let my homie go and fuck off or face the consequences. He's the family lawyer, so he said some scary legal stuff and they fucked off. I forgot to mention that. So security is now up to tenfold. The bros get together and find out that Solozo wants to have a meeting with Mike and the police captain that he has in his back pocket. And having a police captain in his back pocket like that, it makes him invulnerable. Because no one has ever gone down a police captain and that will surely get all the families in New York to turn against him and probably lose them all the political connections. So they are kind of in a bind now with this meeting they want to have with Mike. Then they want to have a meeting with Mike because he's known as a civilian of the family, the guy that doesn't want any part of the family business, so they probably think that he won't try anything funny when they're negotiating a new deal or something. I'm just guessing here, alright? But little do they know Mr. Keep Me Out of the Family Business is slowly changing his mind to that fucking proposition. He says that if they insist to have this meeting in a public place, find out where this place is, and since they were 100% pat him down to check him for weapons before this meeting, if the Corleone family can get a gun in there, hide it somewhere, he will go get this gun and kill them both. Then go into hiding while shit calms down and they use all their connections in the newspaper to show how shady this cop was and grow hatred for this cop so it won't seem as bad that he killed the police captain and get real life karma points till shit calms down enough that he can come back. So Chlamydia, this fat dude associate of their family, makes him an untraceable gun taped up the handle and the trigger with this special tape that leaves no fingerprints behind. Okay, but what about this part where his thumb will clearly rest? It's resting on it right now. Tape it up better, dickhead. Doesn't matter. The time comes, Mike gets in the car with Solozzo and the cap. They pat him down. They take him to this small restaurant in the Bronx. Solozzo speaks to him in some Italiano, chiacchierone, cinquecento, la musica. Then Mike excuses himself to go to the bathroom real quick, gets the gun from behind the up top poop box, walks back and kills them both, pop pop, and does not leave the way Chlamydia told him to. He did not drop the gun with his arms to the side of his body so people still think he has it and he looks someone in the face which he was not supposed to do and this dead body just blinked that's the second time looking at dead bodies in movies to catch them moving worked at all for me in a row two for two motherfucker anyway after that diarrhea hits the blender blades there's cop killer in the news there's cop sucks in the news don comes back to recover in his home and they send the michael over to sicily for hiding but it's getting increasingly more dangerous there because his enemies know that he's there but while he's there he goes to this town of corleone i don't know if it's a place or a family maybe the family is named after the place doesn't matter he sees a hot female there and immediately decides that he wants her puss puss and he stumbles on her dad and asks for his daughter's hand in marriage that shit didn't even take five minutes then in another five minute montage he gets to know her gets married to her and she whips out her titties meanwhile back in new york sonny is beating up his sister's husband for beating up his sister then jackass goes back for domestic violence round two on his sister sonny finds that out and immediately rushes over there to beat his sister's husband up again or kill him we'll never know because he gets gunned down on his way over there at a toll booth and how fast was this linguine dipshit driving to have the car following him for protection arrive this late to the shooting they took off right after him anyway mike gets his news in Sicily and he gets news that it is even more dangerous for him to stay here and they have to move him right now but it's too late because just as fast as she whipped her chimichangas out the bitch gets blown up in a car bomb meant for him so in hindsight it wasn't that smart to have a big fat Sicilian wedding that alerts all your enemies where you are like a bat signal in the night sky it wasn't such a good idea now was it compadre doesn't matter bitch is dead who cares Don Cortezol gets better and hears the news of his dead son and his other son in hiding so he sets up a meeting with the five families to stop this war because all business is suffering from their little feud and he lost a son Tataya lost a son I don't know when that happened maybe Solozo was his son I don't 
don't know, honestly. My brain is hanging on by a thread at this point. I can't keep up. It's all Tony, Sony, Linguini, Fritchini, Mussolini. How am I supposed to keep track of this shit? Anyway, in order to keep the peace and bring back Mike safely from hiding, he'll play ball and share his contacts and enter the drug trade with them on the condition that it is highly regulated. And after the meeting, he notes that the head of this other family, Bartini, is the one calling the shots, not Tatalia. So Mikey comes back safely, and a year later, he finds his old girl like, Hey, shawty, how to do? I know I was missing and hiding without a single word to you for a year. Now, I totally could have taken you with me, but how about we get married and make some children together? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that works, by the way. She's down to clown, even though he told her that he works for his father now. But he did promise that the family business will go legit in five years' time. What he did not tell her, though, is that he is now the new fucking Don, because his dad is getting old and sick. And over time, he makes a lot of business moves and shuffles a lot of people around in order to buy out this casino in Vegas from a business partner called Mo Green and market it with the star power of Johnny Cash. But Mo Green does not want to sell and gets really mad at Mike. And as time goes on, he has a kid with Kay and weird chic, 50% accuracy Al Pacino, old Don, gets weaker, so Bartini smells blood in the water and wants to drive the Corleone family out of town. So Al Pacino warns Al Pacino of this, that Bartini will want to set up a meeting with him and whoever comes to him with this information is probably a traitor. He's also pretty sad because he never wanted this life for his son Mikey. But he's like, whatever, my ass fat regardless. Later on, old guy Corleone dies, he's playing with his grandson, grandson fucking waters his dead body. And at the funeral, Mike is approached by one of his associates, the Tesco guy, to set up a meeting with Bartini, which makes this longtime associate the traitor and not the other fat guy, chlamydia guy. Then at the baptism of his sister's new kid, where he's becoming the godfather of this kid, the transition is complete, shit has come full circle from I don't want to take part in the family business to becoming the godfather himself. While that's happening, his men assassinate, kill, take care of, whatever you want to call it. They put some people to bed with the fishes. These people are all the heads of the five families, including Tatalia and Bartini. They also kill Mo Green. They shoot him in the fucking eye. When you get a shot on the head like that, you don't lay down peacefully. That shit drops like a melon. Whatever though, after the baptization, they take care of Tesco, the traitor, then go deal with Carlo, Mike's sister's husband, who beat her up the second time in coordination with Bartini's men to go kill Sonny because they kind of deal with them, obviously. He kills him as well, although he promised he wouldn't because he didn't want to make his sister a widow, but he did. He doesn't tell his sister, but she finds out that her husband is dead, and she figures that Mikey killed her piece of shit husband and gets hysterically mad at that. Then Mikey lies to his wife about it while touching some faces. This movie gets 302 cats out of 56 acres of prime New York real estate.